Over five years since the Fukushima nuclear disaster, 87,000 people from the prefecture still cannot return home. Most were forced to evacuate in March 2011, but 12,000 families left voluntarily due to concerns about radiation. The prefectural government pays rent subsidies to these voluntary evacuees, but the support will end next April. The evacuees face a tough choice, stay away and pay their own costs, or return to face their worries about radiation. NHK Rosias Koshibagaki has the story. This month, voluntary evacuees from across the country visited Fukushima. They came to demand that the rent support for temporary housing paid for by the prefectural government continue. Housing is the most fundamental human right. Prefectural officials say radiation is down to safe levels thanks to years of decontamination work. They say that they cannot continue paying all the rent. The decontamination process and food safety inspections have been moving along, so living conditions in the prefecture are improving. We understand that when it comes to radiation exposure, everyone experiences anxiety in their own way, so we'd like to support everyone as much as possible according to their needs. Most residents still hope to return home, but doing so is a tough decision, especially for mothers with young children. Megumi Okada was pregnant with her third child when the nuclear accident occurred. She fled Fukushima City and now lives in public housing in Tokyo, with her husband and four children aged from one to eight. I was determined to protect my unborn child and my other young children. Okada was born and raised in Fukushima, and she longs to return with her family someday. But she wonders if it's safe. She regularly checks the status of decontamination work online. Thousands of homes have been cleaned up, but in some streets and forests, the work goes on. We don't spend all of our time in the house, so we're concerned about streets the children might use to go to school. He started nursery school when he was two. Wow, really? Okada's children have now spent more time away from Fukushima than in it. She is afraid the kids will lose their connection with their new home and their new friends if they return now. Five years is a long time, and that makes it difficult to leave. If Okada's family decides to stay from April, they will have to pay their entire rent out of their own pocket. Some households struggle to maintain two homes, the one they left behind in Fukushima and their new one where life has restarted. Noriko Matsumoto evacuated from Koryama in Fukushima and now lives with her teenage daughter in Kawasaki City near Tokyo. They left when her daughter started to get nosebleeds. She was a healthy child, so I was shocked when she suddenly developed these nosebleeds. Her husband still lives and works in Fukushima. They are struggling to cover the cost of food and utilities for two households. The contaminated soil is still there. She wants to go back, but still worries about radiation. Their home has been decontaminated, but the box of contaminated soil is still in their garden, and no one knows when it will be removed. I want to minimize the risk of exposing my daughter to radiation. A survey by the prefecture suggests that about 70% of voluntary evacuees living outside the prefecture say they want to stay outside after April. Five and a half years after the nuclear accident, its effects are still rippling through the lives of those who fled. Yasuko Shibagaki, NHK World, Tokyo. People in Japan are concerned about a strong typhoon heading towards the country. Robert Spetter from our weather desk is tracking the system. Robert, what can you tell us?
Uh, yes, this storm definitely a dangerous one and one of the strongest ones in recent years to really move right over the island of Okinawa and definitely the strongest one of the season out here. Already some of the outer rain bands impacting the island here. We have been seeing some gusty winds this morning, but it's that inner eye wall which is now being picked up on our land-based radar out here across the southern Japanese islands. And right there, that's where we have these intense winds. And as that approaches Okinawa through the overnight hours, it's going to be passing just toward the west of this island. Now, that's the key thing I do want to note because just towards the west puts um, Naha and much of Okinawa in the right front quadrant. Right now, winds about 180 gusts seen to 252 kilometers per hour. Hopefully, that inner eye wall stays just offshore, but I think people out here should still prepare for that eye to just skim the area. Winds right now actually by the Japan Meteorology Agency expecting upwards about 234 kilometer per hour wind gusts. The waves 10 meters high, and remember that could bring some coastal flooding, especially along the southern and eastern areas of the island as those winds start to wrap around. And then we are going to be expecting about 200 millimeters of rainfall. So let's talk about the timing of this storm. Well, conditions are going to slowly get worse and worse throughout the morning, but it's really by mid-afternoon heading into the overnight hours, we're going to be seeing the max of those high heavy rainfall and those high winds heading into Tuesday morning as well, and then eventually tapering off midday for specifically Okinawa here on Tuesday. Now, the storm's not over yet as it pushes by, though. As it tracks back off towards the north, it is going to bring some continued rainfall across parts of Kyushu, Shikoku, and eventually moving its way through central Honshu as we look ahead into your Tuesday and eventually over there towards Wednesday as well. So a big flood maker possibly out here towards the north. Really going to keep a close eye on that. A pro-nuclear candidate in western Japan has won a mayoral election in a town that holds a nuclear power plant. <laughs> Kiyohiko Takakada scored a landslide victory in the two-way race in the town of Ikata on Sunday. He defeated his anti-nuclear plant opponent recommended by the Japanese Communist Party. The former mayor had agreed to restart the plant's number three reactor but resigned because of illness. The reactor was brought back online in August. 
Takakado's campaign message stressed that the plant is crucial for the town's development. We must not allow any accidents to occur at the Ikata nuclear power plant. We will constantly review safety measures and we will do so with utmost care in cooperation with the central as well as prefectural governments. He served as a prefectural assembly member five times before this election. The Monju reactor was a prototype meant to be a centerpiece of Japan's nuclear power industry. But more than two decades and billions of dollars later, the Japanese government is looking at decommissioning it. And that's being met with mixed reactions. NHK World's Kenichiro Okamoto has the details. We'll conduct a drastic review of the Monju reactor project, including the option of decommissioning it. The government's decision earlier this week, it's taking a serious look at decommissioning a reactor that's long been plagued with problems that's come at hefty price. For people who live near the reactor, their opinions are mixed. It's probably better to decommission it than to keep spending money on something that's not working. I think it's better to have Monju for our local economy. Monju could have worked if it had been properly managed, but the operator can't do that. There's no choice but to shut it down. The Monju reactor was meant to play a key role in Japan's nuclear fuel cycle. It's a fast breeder reactor that's designed to generate electricity while producing more fuel than it consumes. What's more, Plutonium in spent fuel from conventional nuclear power plants could be used as fuel in the reactor. That was the theory anyways. The reality? More than $10 billion has been spent on building and operating the prototype reactor. And since trial operations started in 1994, it's only been in operation for 250 days. Trouble started right away. In 1995, a leak of sodium used to cool the reactor led to operations being halted. In 2010, they started test runs again and ran into another accident. A piece of equipment weighing over three tons fell into the reactor putting an end to the tests. Last November, nuclear regulators said the operator was unfit, citing the discovery of 10,000 safety oversights. Even with all the headaches, the local governor is against what the government is trying to do. The decision is extremely irresponsible. I have to say that Fukui residents feel distrust. Governor Nishikawa doesn't think the government has fully studied the issue. He said he wonders whether the nuclear fuel cycle is possible without the Monju reactor. What's more, decommissioning Monju is expected to cost $3 billion. Meanwhile, the government is considering working with France on developing a new, more advanced version of the Monju reactor. And the hope is that it would be far more successful than the current model. But they need to prove it is feasible. Kenichiro Okamoto, NHK World, Tokyo.